Hey guys, I'm back with another video and as the title suggests, it is The Art of Saying No Effectively. So I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been in a situation where you said yes, you were pressured to say yes and you said yes despite wanting to say no? Have you been in a situation where you felt powerless internally because you were in a presence of someone who was pushy, forceful, authoritative and bossy. They got you to say yes, but deep down you wanted to say no. So I want to address this issue. This is something people face on a regular basis. They're not able to gather the will to say no and they end up saying yes which you know makes them feel robbed you know, because they've taken a wrong decision that has cost them not only mental peace but also in some cases maybe money so this if you want to if you do end up watching this video i promise you i'll teach you how to say no this can save you a lot of peace and also in some, some cases money. So yet, so the question I want to ask you is that are you someone who is a yes man? Someone who says yes because you don't want to look like the bad guy. You say yes because you don't want to offend the other person. Are you a people pleaser basically in other words? I just want to say to you that if you are someone who is a people pleaser I have some bad news for you. You have said yes all these days, but let's say one day you say no. That person whom you helped all these years will forget all of that and will only remember the no you said in the previous situation. And you will still be the, the bad guy. So, so here's some advice for you. Please learn how to say no before it's too late. You don't want to be a yes man and you know, be over committed to people who don't deserve your commitment in the first place. So again, the first question, why do we say no? Why do we say yes despite wanting to say no? It is, what happens is that, let's say you have a person, a very you know, intellectually unsophisticated, unreasonable person who comes up with a request, a stupid request, unreasonable request. Yeah. He knows you're going to say no, but he will keep pushing you. He will keep pressuring you until you say yes, until you cave in to that pressure. So when he makes that request, what happens? You hear it, which stirs up this emotional response inside of you. It's like you have to know, you have to remember, the forceful person will never give you time to think. Remember that the forceful person will never give you time to think. They will make sure that you say yes impulsively. So that is where the solution comes in. You, as a person, have to be alert of your emotional states. Because if you're not alert, you're going to end up saying yes, despite wanting to say no. So like, you've got to snap out of that state. And you got to remind yourself that you have the right to decide if you want to partake in an activity or not because you have the bodily autonomy. You understand me? You've always had the freedom to say no. But you have to remind yourself that. It's just that you yourself have forgotten that. And you end up saying yes. Trust me, you don't want to do that in the long term, you know. It is going to end up affecting you. Have you ever had a, a scam call before? You know? Have you ever had someone asking you to reveal personal details? And there are people who have messed up. A, because of lack of awareness that the caller could be a potential fraudster. And B, they are too weak-willed. And if pressured, they will reveal information. And also, have you ever had a nosy friend or a relative 
they ask you some really weirdly personal questions. Could be about your health, could be about your financial situations. And these are questions they're not supposed to ask in the first place. And they are crappy and decent people for that, but yet they ask you such questions. And you, because you're not that strong-willed, you end up revealing that information like a moron that you are. Why? Because you did not know that you could tell them, I'm sorry, I do not wish to reveal this. That's all you have to say. But at that moment, you're so caught up in that emotional state. It's like the other person's unreasonable request. Their voice for those few seconds becomes your own head voice. And you end up saying yes. And you end up revealing important information that you should not have revealed. Could be your how much wealth you have, could be how much you're making per month, could be about your parents, you know, health condition. And these are things you're not supposed to reveal. Trust me, you know, your personal life is not for public consumption. You have to remember this. So when someone asks you a weirdly personal question, really personal question, you have you have to tell them that, I'm sorry, this is too personal, I do not wish to reveal that. You have every right to say that, you should say that, please exercise that right. I'm thinking about my childhood days. Do you, do you remember your teacher? Do you remember your authoritative teachers with their, you know, Indian Anglo accents, Indian half Indian, half British accents? How authoritatively they told you to Hey, stand up, you know, put your hands up, put your finger on your lip. I want to ask you, like, how many of you watching this video have had the balls, have had the guts to say no? How many of you told them, I do not wish to stand? And you won't believe, till this day, if someone asks me to move, I move without even thinking. It happens subconsciously. Surprising, isn't it? I mean, I want to catch myself at that moment. I never tell them I refuse to move. Not, not to be a dick or something, but you know, I just want to. I want to sort of like test my own will. You know, can I say no at that situation? But these processes happen so fast. You know, and again, as I said, you end up moving despite not wanting to move. Have you ever been like a, you know, in a place, a, a public gathering, a family gathering, and say, let's say a temple or a marriage hall? You have a, you know, authoritative relative or an older, an elderly person that tells you, hey, hey, what are you standing here for? Move somewhere else. And then at that moment, because you're so weak, will you end up moving? Be like, oh my God, this guy was so rude. He asked me to move. How dare he ask me to move? I should have just stood there. You should not, not move in the first place. You know? We should have stood there, you know, just be calm. And you know, here's the thing, you know, when it comes to saying no, you don't have to yell or scream. You know? Saying no can be done politely too. There, is, there are tactful ways of saying no. There are diplomatic ways of saying no also. You don't have to lose your cool every time. Unless you're dealing with Indian people who can be very forceful, very pushy. I remember, you know, I used to be a, in a part of a spiritual organization. It's called uh, SGI, Soka Gaka International. In India, that organization was called BSG, which is Bharat Soka Gaka. It is an organization that propagates Nichiren's Buddhism. So I used to be a part of that organization. We had several meetings. We had a, a planning meeting, and we had a, a main monthly meeting called the Zadankai. So for these planning meetings, you know, I shouldn't be saying this, but there were a lot of these individuals, again, older, middle-aged women. And no, this is not a manosphere video. I'm not, I'm not here to bash women, but these individuals who happen to be females, they were, at what I, think very manipulative, pushy, forceful, bossy, dominating, who themselves did not do much, but they saw a younger person and immediately they caught hold of them and they were like, you're taking part in this, you're taking part in that. 
And I, I at that moment, like for many, I, I used, to, I practiced for three years, and you know, the many moments I felt powerless. You know, I felt like I was chained. I felt like someone else was deciding the course of my life, which is, if you think about it, the very definition of slavery, isn't it? I, I don't know. Eventually, I did get out of that organization. You know, finally, I learned how to say no. Luckily, the member that allowed me to quit was, you know, a wonderful individual. Because of that, I didn't. Um, it wasn't that hard to leave. But had it been one of those crazy middle-aged women, they would not have let me even leave. They would have forced me to stay. Yeah. So I guess I do. I do feel that people should learn how to say no. It is extremely important whether you're in a a work situation, whether you're amongst your friends, whether it's a, whether it's amongst your relatives. People will come at you with unreasonable requests. So once again, catch yourself. Catch, like, you know, curb any temptation to say yes. Ask yourself, think to yourself at this situation, should I be saying yes? Should I be saying no? And you got to, and you know, there are times what happens is that you say no. The other person could react negatively to you, could potentially pressure you to say yes, and which will again trigger you. Emotions, it will set up an emotional reaction. Emotions that will hijack your intelligence. And you know, you will end up saying yes once again. But again, you gotta be strong willed. I feel like saying no, again, it's, it is like a muscle. A muscle that needs a lot of exercise. An internal muscle that needs a lot of exercise. Have you heard this saying, your brain is like a muscle, give it exercise. Same. I mean, the art of saying no is like a muscle. You gotta practice. <laughs> you have to be, maybe you could practice internally, you could have conversations with people in your mind and, you know, say no. Or, again, when you're in a real life situation where, you know, where it's wiser for you to say no, please say no. Practice, practice saying no. I know this, it's, yeah, if at all you said no negatively, it could end up tarnishing your reputation. But I do think, for the most part, you know, there are polite ways of saying no. It's just that you have to be like really sensitive. You don't have to, you don't want to offend the other person. Though. Sometimes saying no can be costly too. You know, it could cost you a friendship, it cost you a relationship, maybe in some cases it can cost you your job. But yeah, it, it needs to be done. I hear about, you know, corporate India, where people are working long hours, underpaid, long hours. I think if you look at the Indian psyche, it's, uh, we have like this, this servant mindset. It's like, the very thought does not occur to us. You can say no, but for a lot of people, they're too afraid to say no, especially in a work situation where someone else wields more authority than you. They feel that saying no could cost you your job. I remember there was, I, I was working for this company and uh, it was uh, related to Japanese language, but my sly superiors, what they did was that they made us do Portuguese language instead. And initially, you know, they gave us small tasks, but later they give us tasks that last for hours and you know three of us me and my two colleagues we figured out that you know it's we have to address this issue because you know we are you know Japanese language experts we are not responsible for Portuguese related work and you know again we gathered the will we spoke to our main organization by the way, for this company, we were vendors. So we spoke to the main organization and told them that such a, something like this is happening. And you know, they had it sorted out. So again, that was, this was that one situation in my life where saying no helped me. Otherwise, you know, we end up doing someone else's work, which I was not even paid for in the first place. It was unpaid. Yeah. So again, you know, you gotta, as a person, you have to, you have to learn how to say no. It is, it is, it is really important.
and again, I'll repeat myself, you don't have to say no in a rude manner. You don't have to be rude or impulsive or, you know, defensive. You don't want to hurt the other person. Say no calmly, that's more effective. Because if, if, you, if you did lose, you know, blew your lid off and said no loudly or wildly, maybe it, it could again, once again, cost you that relationship, that important relationship, whether it's a friend, a colleague, a boss, a relative, you don't want that. You can say it lightly, but again, like I said, you have to sort of catch yourself, your temptations, curb your temptations that force you to say yes. And one more thing, you know, more than saying no to people, or sometimes you should also learn how to say no to yourself. Are you someone that has a lot of cravings, food cravings? Learn how to say, it's an impulse, again, it's an impulse. It's kind of, sometimes it's, it just feels so weird. You have this mind, there's constant chatter, sometimes it produces negative emotions that have a drag time that last for days, you know? Kind of sucks, right? It's like your own mind has turned against you. At that time, how do you, again, it has to be done forcefully. If a cat, I can catch yourself emoting that, that weird ass impulse that forces you to maybe consume a lot more calories, consume a lot of sugary snacks, and sort of, Oh, that temptation. You gotta think about the consequences, about that addictive behavior, what's gonna to lead to. You gotta learn how to create that, that negative emotion. Have a negative associations towards pleasurable habits that lead to negative consequences. You have to learn how to do that. You have to how to develop that will. I, I understand willpower eventually does get depleted, but but again, like I said, you know. You're here to be born as planned on a mission, right? And you gotta get better, you gotta reach that highest version of yourself. So this I think is a very important skill, the art of saying no. It's, uh, yeah, this is gonna save you a lot of, uh, how do I say, save you from a lot of uh, negativity, you know? It's gonna save you from a, a potentially bad experience could be a financial fraud, could be addictive behavior, maybe overwork in your workplace. So again, you know, think about it, meditate about this. If at all you have a comment on how to say no effectively, if, if at all there's something I haven't covered in this video, please leave a comment. That'll, I'll be happy to read your comment. If you like the sort of content, again, Consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. It'll help my channel grow. And uh, I hope you liked this video. And I hope you wonderful. I hope you have a wonderful life ahead. You know. All right. Goodbye. See you in the next one. Peace out.